What's up? Today I'd love to share with you a cool way to fool your opponent, because your opponent usually expects you to try to checkmate him, right? But instead, we're gonna hunt his queen, which gives you a more than enough material advantage to win the game later on. And I'm gonna share with you some traps with extremely high success rate that you can use in 10 most popular chess openings to win an opponent's queen. Oh, let's kick it off with the trap number one. You're playing white and you start off with the move knight to f3. Now, your opponent normally in different openings usually either tries pawn e5 or pawn d5. But in this case, pawn e5 is not possible because you're going to capture the pawn. And for that reason, the most common move that your opponents will usually play against you is a move pawn d5. Now, you surprise your opponent once again by playing a move pawn e4, which seems like just a blunder. So why not to capture this pawn? And that's what pretty much all of your opponents will do. Now you jump with your knight forward, knight g5, aiming to get this pawn back. And so your opponent naturally develops a knight to also defend this pawn. And you play pawn d3 to attack this pawn twice. But your opponent is happy to trade a pawn because that's an extra pawn and now he doesn't have to care about it anymore. So after this trade on d3, your opponent is fully happy, he's a pawn up, everything's good. The only thing which is a little bit annoying is that your knight here on g5 is in close proximity to his uh, position and also together with the bishop it creates some unpleasant pressure against this pawn h7. And so once again the top move here in this position for black is pawn h6. Your opponent expects for your knight to go back and your opponent will enjoy an extra pawn. But instead, here comes a boom. Knight takes f7. This explosive move wins the game on the spot, just within a couple moves. And what's funny is that this trap works even against high-rated opponents, actually. Now, the knight is also forking the queen and the rook, therefore it's forced for black to capture, but now you've got this discovered attack. Bishop g6 checks the king, but at the very same time, we are winning the queen on the next move, which again gives you a more than enough material advantage to win the game later on. An extremely popular and successful trap, you're welcome to use it. By the way, if you have any questions about what if black goes somewhere else, I've got another video which I'll link up there and also in the description below the video where I analyzed this variation in greater details and you're welcome to check this out later. Alrighty, we're continuing our journey on fooling your opponent. This time you're playing black, your opponent opens up with the most popular move, pawn to e4, you respond pawn e5, knight f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and at this point it's a good moment for you to start Looking at the position seriously, pretending like you're actually thinking about your next move, and after some thinking you play the move knight to d4, pretending like you just want to trade knights. But of course your pawn will notice that this move loses actually this pawn on e5, and instead of trading knights it looks a lot more advantageous for white to just win a pawn on e5, which also, you know, hits this pawn f7 twice, which looks like super advantageous for white. Now, at this point, if you're playing the over-the-board game, it's time for you to start to shake your head and looking confused, and then after some hard thinking, you play the move kind of out of a desperation, queen to g5, desperately looking for some counter chances. But in reality, this is actually a well-known trap. Well, well known, but not for everybody, of course. Queen g5 actually puts white in a losing position right out of the gate, because queen g5 double attacks this knight, as well as the pawn on g2. And if your queen can enter there, that'll lead to a lot of troubles for white later on. But right now, white is already down the road, and they can't really go sideways too much. Anyway, they're gonna at least lose this knight on a5. But of course, white will still may be optimistic at this point, because knight takes f7, hits the queen, hits the rook, you know, wins a pawn, what more can you ask for? But then you capture this pawn on g2, threatening queen takes h1, and notice that it's actually nearly a checkmate, because your knight also takes away this square from the, your opponent's king. And now you're completely winning, all right, just within a couple moves. After rook goes here to f1, let's say, now you play queen takes e4, check to the king, and at this point your opponent may realize that he's doomed to lose, because, well, Black well, actually has to give up the queen, play queen e2, allowing you to capture the queen and to get the decisive material advantage. Because if not, if white doesn't play that move, but instead plays bishop to e2, that leads to a very funny checkmate, knight f3, a smaller checkmate, taking advantage of the pin. At this point, you may be wondering, hey Igor, but what if my opponent does not want to play pawn e4? What if he plays another common move, pawn to d4? Well, we've got you covered. We're gonna win opponent's queen no matter what he does. He's doomed to lose a queen against you. So after d4, we're gonna play pawn e5, 
gambit in a pawn here. After that, we play bishop to c5, just, just developing. Your opponent usually plays knight of 3. I've checked the database, that's the most common way for white. And now we play pawn d6. Again, just a normal move, pretending like you're developing. And here there is an important note. If you're playing an online blitz game, then it's important for you on the next move to play your move real quick, immediately. Because your opponent should think that you pre-moved it in advance. She should think that you pre-moved this knight to jump on e7, expecting white to play some developing move, and your knight will come here to e7. But what white usually does here in reality is pawn takes d6, and as I said, you gotta quickly and instantaneously play knight to e7, pretending like that was a pre-move. And then your opponent will easily think that, oh, he just pre-moved this silly move, I can win a knight. And they'll happily capture it, thinking that they're actually winning the game right now, but then here comes a boom, bishop takes f2. The strong counter blow, which turns the table around, now the king is forced to move, which deflects the king from the protection of the queen, so we grab the queen, the goal is achieved. The next trap is really evil, even title players are falling for this trap, because it's like... It's nearly impossible for your opponent to calculate all these variations if they aren't ready, if they aren't prepared. So you start off with the move pawn d4, your opponent responds pawn d5. Now you play pawn e4 or sacrifice the pawn. Your opponent captures it, you play knight to c3, attacking the pawn, aiming to get it back. Therefore, black goes knight of 6 to defend the pawn. And now we kind of acknowledge that we can't get our pawn back and we just play pawn f3. Three. After your opponent captures it, you now recapture it with a queen. Which is a nice move, by the way, it potentially prepares you to castle queenside in some variations. But your opponent may notice that you keep playing dumb moves and you keep losing pawns, because black can safely capture this pawn on d4, getting the second pawn for nothing. Then, anyway, you play bishop e3, at least you're developing a bishop with a tempo, and what's nice here in that is, is that although you sacrificed a couple pawns, you're actually had in development and you're having quite significant compensation here. Your opponent here will think for some time, and one of the moves that they commonly play is the move queen before. Looks very advantageous. Not only black retreated, but they also counterattack this pawn on b2, which, you know, from there it's gonna attack the rook, attack the knight. And if you castle queenside, then it looks like it loses to another move, bishop to g4, which screws the queen and the rook. And it looks like black is just gonna capture something with every move that they play, and you're gonna lose all of the pieces that you have. But instead, here comes the refutation. It's the move which, as I said earlier, is extremely hard for black to foresee, so we can't really blame black for not seeing it. It's the move knight to b5, so quite a high level stuff. It's a sacrifice of the queen, and strangely enough, this move creates a threat of checkmate in one, knight takes c7. For that reason, black can't capture your queen, because knight takes c7 is, near, is really a checkmate. Notice that your rook cuts black's king off, so that's really a checkmate. Let's stack this move back. And then what is black gonna do instead? It's not easy for black to defend this pawn because also notice that this knight on b5 is doing a good job interfering with the black's queen so that he can't defend this pawn on b7 anymore. Therefore, besides knight takes c7, you've got the second powerful threat, which is queen takes b7. And if you can execute that move, that's gonna lead to a complete devastation for black because from there your queen is gonna attack the rook, then attack the knight. In some variations, maybe it'll jump to c8. So that's gonna win anyway. And for that reason, some of your opponents will decide to give up their queen. Here, queen takes b5. And indeed, that prevents an immediate checkmate. But the goal was not to checkmate an opponent's king, but just to win a queen and to win a game later on. So the goal is achieved. Now you're getting a winning material advantage. If you plan to use this trap and want to know some other side variations, I've got you covered. I've got another video which goes more in depth about this particular variation, and you may check it out later. If you don't want to play those special openings which are designed to trap your opponent, then you may of course continue with your usual move, which could very well be the move pawn e4. And then if your opponent goes for the Sicilian defense, one of the main options of black, then you are gonna go into the so-called Smith Mora Gambit here after pawn to c3. Pawn captures knight to c3, you're sacrificing the pawn to get ahead in development and to have a long-term initiative. Here black usually responds symmetrically, knight to c6, knight of 3, and at this point black realizes that if they jump with their knight symmetrically, then they have to always worry about this move pawn e5 attacking the knight. And they usually don't want that. Therefore instead, they want to first play the move pawn d6, stop you from pushing this pawn forward, and then safely play knight of 6 without caring about any potential attacks from your side. You play a development move bishop c4, black now gladly plays knight of 6, but then you still nevertheless play the move pawn e5 and actually puts black in a big, big danger. It is very likely that your opponent is unfamiliar with the, with the theory about this trap and then they just go down within a couple moves. 
because uh, your attack is extremely, extremely dangerous in all of those variations. For example, if black captures with the knight, you happily recapture, pawn takes, but then you don't trade queens, because that's not the goal, right? The goal is to win an opponent's queen, so we first capture over here. It's the same type tactical motif that we have already seen in some of the previous traps, but in, in a new variation, in a new opening, and after king takes, we are winning the queen, getting a winning game. If you are an advanced level player, then perhaps you're familiar with the previous trap in the Sicilian defense, but the next one will probably be something new, which is great because your opponents aren't familiar with it. Now, there are two ways for you to get into it. It may occur against the Scandinavian defense if you start off with a move pawn e4, your opponent responds pawn to d5, and you play knight to c3 at this point. But there is also another way where you can force your opponent into this variation, into this position, no matter what they play at first. Let's start, start again. At first, you start with the move knight to c3, an uncommon move which is perfectly fine when you're developing a piece. And then, the most popular response for black is a move pawn d5, because that grabs the center, maybe creates some d4 threat at some point. And then you play e4, pretending like you're just offering an exchange. And after your pawn takes it, you then don't take immediately, but you play bishop c4. Now your opponent thinks to himself, wait a second, I can now defend this pawn. Knight of 6 defends the pawn and develops a knight. And now you play pawn d3 again, pretending like you're just offering the trade, but we never wanted it. So pawn takes d3, and now you kind of keep playing in gambit style knight to f3, just developing a piece. And since your opponent is used to your dumb play, that you're just losing material with your every move that you play, he may gladly capture one more pawn here on c2, but now, instead of queen takes c2 or queen takes d8, you already know the trick, right? I'll give you a couple seconds to notice it yourself. Yes, it is the same shot bishop takes f7, which is in this case quite a surprising thing, because, you know, this pawn was attacking you, but you ignore it and instead sacrifice your bishop over here with all the same motif, queen takes d8, and you win. Now let's imagine you're playing black once again, your opponent starts off with the move pawn d4, hoping for some sort of queen's gambit, but you instead, after pawn d5 and pawn c4, you surprise your opponent and you move your pawn not to e6, which is something that white expects, but to e5, you counterattack. Now white will usually win this pawn and now pawn to d4 creates some problems for white, because at least they can develop their knight normally, this square is taken away. And white feels uncomfortable about that, because yeah, they're a pawn up, but you know, they can't develop their knight normally. Um, you know, in order to develop this bishop, they also have to move the pawn somehow. So they do play pawn e3 here quite frequently, hoping just to trade off this annoying pawn, and after that to finish their development comfortably and to enjoy an extra pawn. But now you play bishop b4, as always, we're confusing your opponent and playing the moves which he does not expect. Now white covers bishop d2, again expecting you to trade bishops, but instead you once again play the move which was not expected, pawn takes e3. And again, it's, it's a really fun trap, it's quite an old one, so some of your opponents will definitely be aware of it, but many aren't, because the following variations are quite tricky. Now, your opponent notices that uh, he can actually win a bishop for nothing, right? So they will. But now pawn takes f2, and at this point your opponent starts thinking hard, and he realizes that king takes f2 is actually not an option, because that will lose the protection of the queen, and you will win it. So they play king to e2, hoping to at least maintain the guard of the queen. Now you have a rare opportunity to under-promote in a real practical game. You take your promote to a knight, delivering this nasty check to the king, Therefore, I captures it, but now here comes bishop g4, adding one more attack to all of the white's you know, vulnerable exposed pieces, and you ultimately win the queen on the next move. Now, what if your opponent starts off with the move pawn to e4? Well, we already know that he's doomed to lose, right? No matter what he tries, he's gonna lose a queen against you. So, we start off with the move pawn e5. We have already an analyzed knight of 3 Let's analyze another common move, pawn f4, which is one of the most aggressive chess openings for white, the king's gambit. Now we play pawn to d5, as always we love to sacrifice a pawn in order to gain the initiative and to attack later. After pawn takes d5, we are confusing your opponent once again. They expect you to play pawn e4, which is the main line, and it leads to a ton of theory. But instead, you keep sacrificing pawns, pawn to c6. Just now I realized that in all of these traps, somehow we give up a few pawns to then later on gain an opponent's queen, which is nice. Now, white captures here, knight takes c6. At this point, it's already not that easy for white to figure out what to do, because, you know, their king is a little bit exposed with this move, pawn f4. And all the variations, they gotta worry about this potential check, queen h4. So, knight f3 is the most popular move for white to play. Now, you play e4 to attack this knight. The knight jumps forward. At least they can somehow, you know, justify this pawn f4. Now, at least it defends the knight. 
And you play them with bishop c5, which again annoys white, because it shows them that they aren't going to castle that easily. You do control this g1 square, and therefore white's king can't castle anymore. All right, plays bishop b5. That's a pin that pretty much all of your pawns enjoy imposing against you, creating this pin, attacking the knight, attacking it twice. Looks like you're going to defend it, but you just ignore it, stay calm, and play knight f6. Now your pawn thinks that you simply overlooked it, and actually, even if your pawn doesn't take it, you know, he's in a quite a dangerous position anyway. But if white does take it here on c6, hoping that now this is a double attack and white is going to win the rook, you play bishop d7, and after white wins the rook, they're happy, you say, hey, wait a second, you want a rook, but I'm going to win a queen. And you play bishop g4. A sudden, shocking move, and it turns out that white's queen is trapped right there on its original square d1. Quite a rare case. And you win, because not only you win a queen, but you also continue your attack against this exposed king. You can even play queen d4, queen f2 in some variations, you know, something like that. So you're completely winning here. The following trap is quite funny, because it usually works against a little bit more advanced level opponents. And it usually does not work against beginners, which is controversial. Let me show you why. After white goes pawn d4, this time we're playing knight f6, which is also a common move. And after white goes pawn c4, we are sacrificing the pawn, pawn e5. Now white captures it, you jump with your knight forward to e4. Now white usually plays knight to f3, that's the most common move. And here you play the move pawn to b6, pretending like you just want to fiancado your bishop here to b7. And at this point, if your opponent is a little bit more advanced, they'll usually notice that there is a critical flaw in this move pawn b6. White can jump with their queen forward, queen d5, with a double attack. But that's what we're waiting for, actually. White thinks that he's about to win, but we've got something prepared against it. And that's why I said that it usually does not work against complete beginners, because complete beginners simply does not notice this move queen d5, which we, we wanted them to notice, but they're simply not strong enough to figure out these tactics. Anyway, queen d5 is a very high level thing. I mean, the following trap is a very high level thing. Even masters and grandmasters are trapped that way. Now, we play bishop b7, giving up the bishop. And after queen takes it, we play knight to c6. And our idea here is to put this queen in the cage and to win it later on. Notice that there aren't many squares for the queen to go to. Queen a6 is basically the only available square. And if not, against almost any move of white, you're gonna play knight to c5. And from there, you can easily notice that they'll trap opponent's queen completely. Therefore, white really has to be concerned about his position. And white usually tries to escape, so they play queen a6, trying to somehow escape. You play land bishop b4 check, play this move with the tempo, and you put one more piece around, you know, white's queen, which cuts off some more uh, of the squares where the queen could possibly retreat. After bishop d2, we play our winning move knight to c5. Now the queen is attacked. The only square for the queen to go to is the queen to b5. And now you can win it by playing a6, but it's even stronger to trade the bishops first, because otherwise your pawn can at least get two minor pieces for the queen. So we trade here on d2 first, we then play pawn a6, and it's another fun variation where your knights, with, with the support of one pawn trade, uh, captured, you know, the queen. So this knight takes away these two squares, the other knight takes away those two squares, and ultimately, you know, the queen is lost, as always. Congratulations if you made it thus far, it is the final trap for today, it means that you have enough patience to become a strong chess player. After pawn e4, one of the op openings which is popular on amateur level, in fact even I recommend playing it, is move pawn d5. Now against the Scandinavian defense, we are also going to use a little trick here. After knight to c3, queen a5, we're entering the main line, and usually white goes pawn d4, and after that, again, there is a ton of theory. But instead we avoid playing this move, and we play knight of 3 which is a little provocative move. Lots and lots of your opponents are love putting this pin, bishop g4. They think that that creates some uncomfortable situation for you. But now you play pawn h3, and actually, um, it turns out that this move bishop g4, although so common, turns out to be wrong and it gives you an advantage. Because now, if bishop goes back, you can actually pressure it forward with the move pawn g4, and your bishop potentially can even be placed here on g2, so you have this advanced fianchetto, and you just gain some extra temples for your attack, and, you know, life's cool, black is at a disadvantage. If, if your opponent notices that, he may decide to trade here on a 3 Now, queen takes. Notice that it also hits this pawn on b7. Your opponent may wish to develop knight c6. Maybe in some variations they'll hope to castle and, you know, play knight d4 and hit your queen, hit this pawn on c2, something like that. They may fantasize about stuff like that. But, of course, we aren't going to allow that. We play bishop b5. Now, we put the pin on this knight and we're threatening to capture it because we're attacking it twice. 
The only move for black to defend it is a slightly awkward move, queen b6, but that's the only way. But now you shock your opponent once again with the winning shot, knight to d5. We're attacking the queen, and if it captures the bishop, and by the way, it has to capture the bishop if it tries to escape, just, just a little side note, if it tries to go here, we play pawn b4 and we force it into capturing our bishop anyway. So queen takes b5 and now knight takes c7, which is a fork to the king and the queen, and thus the goal is achieved. We won an opponent's queen. And here comes our puzzle of the day. It is white to move and win. An